Hello everyone, uh, welcome on the unit on uh, neural networks. Like uh, for the previous uh, uh, unit, uh, we will first uh, uh, introduce the topic uh, with some uh, uh, theory and then uh, we will see some practical implementations in uh, Julia. So neural networks uh, while they can be used also as part of uh, other uh, machine learning tasks, uh, most often are used as a supervised uh, task uh, where we provide uh, them with pairs of uh, features and, uh, and the labels. And uh, they are really, really powerful tools. However, they are actually composed of very simple uh, units. So uh, I really don't like the metaphor, uh, the name neural networks, because it makes imply something uh, that is uh, complex, that is difficult, that uh, it makes hard to, to enter the, the subject, while in reality, and we are going to see, neural networks are really simple transformations of the data that flow from the input, and then it passes through various layers, and it ends up with an output. And uh, that is their beauty. So what is interesting here is that even if they are made of very simple units, uh, they are uh, actually capable to, rec to recognize uh, not, for example, just objects in an image, but also abstract concepts as uh, people's emotions or uh, situations or, uh, or given a photo of, uh, of a place, they c it, you can uh, uh, predict which environment uh, you are in. So very uh, abstract concepts and uh, this complex capabilities comes by putting together very simple uh, units. So we'll first describe neural networks and we later learn how to train uh, them from the data. And uh, uh, concerning the practical implementation in Julia, we'll not do like in perception the full algorithm. Uh, we'll see some parts uh, here in these slides, some, some parts of a neural network, but uh, mainly we will deal with using neural network with different kind of tasks and data sets. So what neural networks give us more than uh, uh, the perceptron algorithm. Well, we already noted that with the perceptron algorithm that is a uh, linear uh, classifiers, we can still transform the, the future vector x uh, and make a future representation phi of x that includes also non-linear transformations if you want. And so we can still use uh, linear classifiers to treat problems that are not linearly separable. And we saw this for the perceptron algorithm, but exactly the same things uh, happens for uh, studying reg regressions. So we can use uh, an algorithm that is linear, uh, but uh, uh, we can make a transformation in the X, we can add uh, for some whatever dimension, we can score it or we can uh, take other uh, nonlinear transformations. And so we can still use a linear, uh, linear um, algorithm to, to treat these, uh, these problems. However, the problem is that what we are doing here, this transformation from x to phi of x, this future transformation, is not learned from the data, but is us that we apply it a priori before actually using the machine learning uh, algorithm. And the advantage of neural network is that instead this future transformation it's endogenous to the learning step. It's made, is uh, learned during the training of the algorithm. So we'll see three different types of neural networks. Feedforward neural networks are the classical ones, the simpler one where the inputs flow from uh, the, from the data to, through a set of what we call layers and they finally reach an output, in, but all happens in one direction. Convolutional neural networks 
where uh, uh, one of more layers I is represented by a convolutional uh, layer uh, and we'll, uh, these are used mainly for image uh, classifications. And finally, the third type is different kind of recurrent neural networks where at the opposite of feed-forward neural network, the input doesn't come only from, uh, uh, from the beginning, but it can arrive at each uh, layers and uh, these are used to learn sequences of data.